Okay, today I'm gonna to talk to you about estimating the rate of transpiration. So as a quick recap, transpiration just means water loss from a plant. There's another video that you can watch that's just about transpiration by itself. So here's the plant that we're gonna be measuring the water loss from, so the rate of transpiration from. So this whole bit of equipment here, the whole thing, is called a potometer. And essentially, all that it does is it tracks the movement of an air bubble and the, how far that bubble moves in a certain amount of time gives us the rate of transpiration. So let's, have, let's break it down and see what's going on. Now, first of all, what we do is we have our plant right here. So our plant is held kind of within a bung and all of these tubes here contain water. So here, for example, here we have a reservoir of water that I'll talk about more in a little bit. And here at the bottom, we have a beaker full of water as well. So there's water throughout the whole of these, these tubes here. There's an, one air bubble, and this air bubble is extremely important, as we'll see in a minute. So what happens is this. During transpiration, water is lost from the leaves. Now, as water is being lost from the leaves, it draws up water, so water is drawn up into the plant because we've got a constant transpiration stream going on. So water gets drawn up through to replace the water that's lost from the leaves. So let's think about this whole series of events. If water's being drawn into the plant, it's gonna draw water this way. If all water's being drawn this way, it's gonna draw water up there. And now we get to our air bubble. So if all of this water is being drawn up and through the plant, then this air bubble over time is also going to move that way. Now, how we estimate the rate of transpiration is we need to see how this air bubble moves over time. So let's say we're going to time our experiment and we're going to leave it for 10 minutes on my stop clock down there, okay? Now what I need to do is this, I need to get a ruler. So here's my ruler right here. And I need to measure the distance that that air bubble moves in, um, how far, sorry, how far that air bubble moves in 10 minutes. So let's say for sake of argument, I've left it 10 minutes and in 10 minutes it's moved 30 millimeters. What I need to do now is I need to calculate the rate of transpiration. So if it's traveled 30 millimeters in 10 minutes, all I need to do is find out how, much, how far it's moved every single minute. So the answer is every single minute, it's traveled three millimeters. So what I need to do after I've done one repeat, so one, sorry, done the experiment once, so I've allowed the bubble to move once. This is where this reservoir of water and this little thing here, this little tap, oops, this little tap comes into play. So right here we have a tap. So the whole point of this reservoir of water and tap is really simple. During the actual experiment, it's closed. All it's used for is I open the tap to allow the water to, to flow down here, just to restore the bubble to the starting position that I want. So once I've done the experiment once, I just open the tap to put the um, air bubble back to its starting position, and then I can go again. So different things I might want to be looking at. Each time I might change the light intensity. So I might see how the light intensity, so the light that I'm shining on the plant, affects the rate of transpiration. My independent variable, the thing that I change, might be the temperature, I could change the temperature to see how that affects the rate of respiration. And finally, something else I could change, I could change the airflow. So I could see if I've got a fan blowing on this, how does that affect the rate of transpiration? But that essentially is it. The whole piece of equipment is used called a photometer, and it's all about seeing how far the air bubble travels over a certain period of time. And right there is my rate of transpiration. Thank you.